What's the subtle sign that someone had a rough childhood? My sister-in-law adopted three siblings who are completely self-sustainable at a very young age. When they were visiting, I noticed a lot. If I gave anything to the oldest boy, he would pass it off to the youngest sister. Then I'd give him another, and it went to the middle sister. Then I'd give him another, and he'd finally keep it for himself. I asked if they wanted water. He said yes, and I asked if the girls wanted water too. Oh, we can all share this one. Obviously I gave them all water, but that one hit me pretty hard. He knew their eating schedules, and would nag my sister-in-law. Offered to make them mac and cheese or noodles or whatever we have laying around. Promised to clean up after. He was 12 years old. When normal kids play video games, they're glued. This kid was constantly checking over his shoulder to make sure everyone was safe. And if he felt one of his sisters was up to no good, he would put the controller down. Even if it meant dying or losing his progress in the game. To elaborate on up to no good what the oldest brother considered bad behavior was pretty innocuous. There were several instances of things I consider normal childish behavior that he would regularly put a stop to. The most outstanding one was being too loud. It wouldn't even be yelling or screaming. Just typical 5 year old make believe noises that would cause him to run over and tell the little one to keep it down. Oh, that's a lot for a 12 year old to take on his shoulders. I hope he and his sisters are doing better now and their future will be brighter. If anything, he was taking on more than what a parent would take on. Not only did he have to parent them, but he also had to enforce the strict standards that his abusive parents put forth. Standards that change based on time of day, how they feel, whether or not they are high slash craving drugs, etc. I'm sure it would have been easier to just raise them on his own in an apartment, totally unsupervised. They're no longer with my sister-in-law, but they still have contact with her and are in a better place. Having the ability to function as their own parent at a young age. Talking like an adult at a young age. Anything else that shows they had to grow up fast. When I was 15 I had a whole network of supportive people in my head. They took care of me, helped figure out my emotions, and told me how much they loved me, basically provided validation. Whenever I achieved something big and my parents didn't acknowledge it, like I wanted them to, I would throw myself small parties in my head and get up early to eat a small cake or something to celebrate. I still remember them sometimes. They were the parents I never had. Same. Hugs I just want to tell you, or anyone else who needs to hear this, that you deserve to be loved and validated because you existed. You shouldn't have ever felt like you had to earn that from them. You existed to be loved and anything short of that was entirely their failings not yours. Insecurity. My psychology professor used to joke that psychology is a study of common sense. When someone is insecure, it is generally because they lack security as a child. Parental love was typically conditional and varied depending on the caretaker's mood. The child becomes insecure due to love not being guaranteed, so to earn this basic need, they will go throughout life trying to solve social puzzles that don't exist. Solving imaginary puzzles all the time can prove to be fatiguing, so these individuals tend to isolate themselves. Doesn't have to be caused by a lack of parental love either. You can have a loving home, but struggle socially in school and end up with a very similar result. Bullying etc will make you insecure too, yes. Insanely independent. They've learned not to trust anyone to help them so do everything themselves. I do this because during my childhood, I had no one to depend on. It has been very difficult to create intimacy as an adult when you don't want anyone to do anything for you. You should read adult children of emotionally immature parents. I did last year, and it discussed the different kinds of emotionally immature parents and the types of defense mechanisms their children tend to develop that last into adulthood and relationships. One of them being some kids manifest their anxiety that they don't really understand is anxiety yet by becoming super high functioning when it comes to problem solving and generally learning how to be competent adults. Like the feeling you learned as a kid of um you have no fk and clue what you're doing so you makes you do a 180 when developing life skills, but deep down you can be an anxious mess whose worst fear is feeling like your life is one frick up away from being out of your control. I read that and thought damn, welcome to who I am. 
It made so much sense once that book made me think about it. I remember going to summer camp as a kid and meeting Milo. Milo was big on attention seeking and validation, and would take food from the cafeteria back to his bunk, like eggs and toast. I remember thinking he was just weird, but I think looking back, and knowing what I know now, he was probably being neglected at home. Thin as a rail and probably malnourished, so he wanted as much food as he could get, and just wanted someone to acknowledge him. Pretty sad stuff. I came here to post about food hoarding obviously, there are a lot of reasons why a person might have a complicated relationship with food, but food hoarding is often specifically a behavior that stems from childhood food insecurity. If you don't get to eat regularly as a little kid, your lizard brain may never really believe that whatever food you have is enough. I think that can be generalized to a lot of behaviors. Whatever you were missing out on as a kid attention, affection food, security on some level, you're going to be seeking that out for the rest of your life. This is my husband all over. We have an extra fridge freezer, a large chest freezer and a converted food pantry in the back of the garage, because the kitchen was full to bursting. There is so much food here we could withstand a siege. I just go with it, I understand why he does it, and it has come in very handy during the lockdown. They apologize habitually, compulsively, and for everything. Even for things that have nothing to do with them. I will literally apologize to the void for my very existence when no one else is present. Stand up from my desk and reflexively whisper I'm sorry. The void forgives you. The void loves you and sees your progress. The void is proud of you. It wants you to rest easy knowing you're doing your best and that you have nothing to be sorry for. Everyone is different, but one that automatically raises a red flag for me, and makes me extremely worried, is when someone flinches for no reason. I wouldn't say it's for no reason, but I don't know what other words to use. So really sorry about that. Like, you raise your voice slightly at them and they flinch, you raise your hands to grab something near them and they flinch, you look at them in a certain way and they flinch, you hug them and they flinch, etc, etc. I joke about being a fainting goat, but I'm so hypervigilant that I nearly jump out of my skin at any kind of startle. But this is exactly why I'm like this. My old boss used to be like this. Seemed completely well. Adjusted healthy person, but if you startled her she would jump out of her skin. We used to clomp down the hallway to make as much noise as possible before entering her office. Found out much later she had an abusive dad who worked nights who used to rage and kept her walking on eggshells her entire childhood. When things get tense, they move and breathe very silently and are hyper aware of everything that is happening and everyone else's actions. I find that they also read people very well but still have poor judgment when it comes to close relationships. Okay I just had a realization cause of this comment cause, when I was a kid my parents would fight, and if I was even existing in their way I would take the end of it, and I just got good at being quiet and flexible, hiding in small spaces. I'm sorry you had to grow up with that. Sadly, you aren't alone here. It's amazing that we have the power of invisibility, and don't even realize it sometimes. Jumping at every loud noise, apologizing too much, difficulty maintaining eye contact in stressful situations. If the person suffers from insomnia or severe migraines, this is in my case. The stress from my childhood gave me chronic migraines, and there are many more. These are just from my perspective. Careful with the eye contact thing it can be, but folks on the autistic spectrum also have this. This usually results in me looking at people's chest area occasionally. People think I'm starting at their breasts till they get to know me. Either isolated or poor choices in friends, unhealthy romantic relationships, unhealthy use of substances, low self-esteem, dependence on others for validation, poor self-regulation of emotions and behavior, easily heightened and slash or experience anxiety, no goals or lower than they could achieve and anything else, and any combination of these. Hey man, that's literally me to a T. Are you okay? The first lesson we learn in childhood is, how much am I worth? Our carriage drivers are the first to reflect this worth to us from, when we are infants and toddlers. If we cry, will someone come to us? If we fall down, will someone pick us up? To when we are kids and teenagers, do our caretakers choose to spend time with us? Do we get help with schoolwork slash friend drama? 
there is an important balance here. As kids, we want to be taught that we are equally important as everyone else. Some kids are taught they are less important, and as adults, they may have a hard time asking for help. They think they are bothering someone when they have a problem. They may also prioritize the needs of others based on an underlying belief that other people are more important. Some kids are taught that they are more important than others and therefore treat others poorly and have trouble learning empathy. They try to justify in their own minds why they are better which can lead to some narcissistic type thinking slash behavior. Well this explains a lot I also grew up being taught that I'm always fine and there's nothing wrong with me despite having multiple things wrong with me so I feel like that also factors into why I struggle to ask basic help. My son is one year old and one thing we've been very conscious of is staying away from phrases like you're okay. It seems small but it can minimize how someone feels like what they feeling isn't valid. Instead, we try things like that scary, isn't it when he falls, or I know you're hungry, but we are going to have dinner in 5 minutes, when he's hungry and crying. Small things, but they matter. Someone who rarely shares what happens at home, or talk about their family. Damn this hits close to home. In elementary school I used to struggle with writer's block, and while yes that was true a lot of it stemmed from a fear of judgement. 1. People wouldn't like my ideas or writing. 2. I felt like what happened at my home specifically was wrong compared to everyone else, and thus didn't want to write about it. This was hard considering a lot of elementary school writing prompts involve writing about family. I also didn't want to lie and make up something that didn't happen as it felt wrong. Hathophobia, or the fear of being touched, is definitely one of them. Flinching at loud noises or quick movements. Wanting to be at work and doing good all the time. Inconsistent hobby practice that is drawing, but only sometimes drawing, and then dismissing what you draw is not good enough. Can you not describe my issue with hobbies, please? I can't focus on one. I think I'm not good enough and find a new one, thinking that I'm supposed to be immediately good at something. I hate it. Well, because of that I have a very vast amount of knowledge on very random things, but it's never deep knowledge, if that makes sense. I feel this so much. Growing up I was one of the kids who didn't have to study, but still got good grades. I think that translated, at least for me, to the lack of stubbornness to get good at something. If I don't pick it up quickly, I think I'll never get it, so I don't try. And since I never put effort in, nothing I do is ever good enough. I'm in the same boat, I can talk about tons of random things with people, but just for a bit, then my knowledge runs out in any given topic. I dk if that makes sense or not, but all that to say, I feel ya yeah and it kinda sucks sometimes. Can't figure out whether or not to permanently cut off contact with crappy parents, or who go back and forth. Cutting off and trying again, and cutting off and trying again. Even considering it means your childhood was ex crappy. And if you want to, but can't do it, it probably means your childhood was ex times crappier than that. To erode your sense of self and healthy boundaries to the point where you know what you have to do, but have been brainwashed by your oppressors to the point where you can't bring yourself to do it. Also thinking that achieving something their parents want will mean a happy relationship with them afterwards, as if their love was to be won over. My mom always pushed me to get married. I was so excited to tell her I was getting married, thought she would finally think I was a good person. Well she tried to talk my so out of marrying me, telling him I was a terrible person and couldn't love anyone. In the end he decided he didn't want to marry me anymore. From the horse's mouth. People pleasing behaviors, class clown, always agrees, overcompensating with laughter during conversation, in an attempt to appease others, self-isolating, stops contacting friends for seemingly no reason, due to feelings of inferiority slash worthlessness, no motivation to make anything of themselves, believing they would only fail anyway, allows themselves to be bullied, usually hangs out with slash dates abusive people, conspiracy theorist, can't live without a sense of impending doom, will unconsciously find one. Extremely nervous when doing new things in front of others. So mature for their age equals didn't get to be a kid slash teen. Total inability to accept compliments. No or very few distant friends as an adult. Barely any memory of childhood. 
No happy stories of childhood. Extremely negative self-talk. I overcompensate with laughter. I have had people ask me how I'm so funny and happy all the time. As if I have no problems at all. I'm like Bish. I literally sob for hours. Unable to stop. Regularly. I just feel like. If I can't laugh at stuff then I'll end up crying. I have severe depression and have struggled with suicidal ideation for years, but I doubt most people in my life would guess that. Boundary issues are common, but reactions still are an individual thing. What helps to keep in mind is the 4F model of trauma responses, fight, flight, fawn and freeze. When you notice somebody's reactions are easily categorized as one of those, and it is a very persistent pattern. Adverse childhood circumstances of some sort are a pretty safe bet. Is a general idea here that they've already been through traumatic situations enough times that they've wired themselves for a consistent choice within the four Fs. As far as I'm educated on this subject, and as far as I understood your question, the 4 Fs are a fear response, and depending on one's resilience, your nervous system might develop one of these responses as a main response. Something needs to happen very early in life, and repeatedly over a long period of time. In short. 4 Fs equals fear response equals survival. My fear response is freeze, and I hate it. Although with time and the help of therapy, it has gotten a lot better. You can't really tell. Traumas affect everyone differently. I really like this answer. I've struggled with the idea of nature versus nurture. I've known people with absolute angels as parents with a very nice childhood who grew up to be degenerates. I've also known others who have had a very rough upbringing and have managed to really make something of themselves. Don't forget that some people are amazing at keeping up the illusion and that doing what they think is best doesn't actually mean that it is the best. Not saying that there aren't people who turn into assholes even with great families. But I have seen both people screwing up with the nicest intention as well as families deep in denial that someone who is a good friend slash brother slash sister slash cousin could possibly be a crap parent. Watch their table manners. Meals are forced contact time in bad households, and it can easily show. Some examples are becoming less talkative, or withdrawn during meals, they realize their elbow is on the table, and they jerk it away quickly, or something innocuous like a sneeze at the table, causes undue shame or embarrassment. Conversely, someone who grew up without parental guidance can also develop odd eating habits. In the case of a co-worker of mine, they collect the condiments near them. She would pull the ketchup bottle out of the little rack on the table, use it, and then keep it by her plate instead of putting it back. I asked if she was done with it, and she said, oh, sorry, I ate a lot of meals alone growing up. Turns out she grew up with a single mom who worked two jobs, and she was used to nobody being there to pass things. I have to constantly remind myself to slow down when I'm eating with other people. My siblings and I inhale our food, because the faster you ate the faster you could leave the table, and less time at the table meant less chance of getting in trouble for something. If my dad couldn't find anything to be mad about he'd settle for having attitude which meant whatever he wanted it to mean at that moment. Christ, this thread is reading like my childhood trauma greatest hits collection. Being very calm and collected in serious slash emergency situations. Having to deal with stressful stuff all my life has made me very capable in tense situations. This could go the complete opposite way to BTW just my experience. Many of my friends have me listed as their emergency contacts instead of their parents. Because they are like I know that you can actually help instead of just flip out. My childhood wasn't tough and my parents hated me slash treated me badly since. But they are just basically children. Completely unreliable. Unable to plan spiteful in the way teens are i had to take care of everything so now i'm just good at keeping it together good people don't always make good parents wow that's a great way of putting it this is why we are estranged rather than anything they did having to parent your own parents is not worth the frustration and stress 